Yeah, so just here to talk about the benefits of grass measuring um, from a dairy farm perspective. So uh, in Ballyhays College, we've been measuring intensively here for 17 years, really, since 2005. Um, and I suppose I think of it kind of in terms of benefits, you've got the short, medium and long term benefits. So the short term benefits essentially is that the cows are going into the right grass, you know, not every day, but 80 percent of the time that they're going into the right covers, which has a big effect on the performance so it's probably worth you know between two and three litres per cow per day to have them going into the right uh, swords okay, so that's the big short-term benefit that they're going into the right grass um, and also that the paddocks on a daily basis have been grazed out properly so if you're going into heavy swords generally tends to be you end up um, uh, not grazing out properly so you have to top and so on so that's in terms of short term the medium term then is kind of you know, week to two weeks, am I going to have enough grass in two weeks time, you know, planning yourself out over the next week or even month in terms of how much ground you're going to close up for silage and that sort of sort of stuff, um, which is really important and, and it's it, it probably reduces the stress level of managing grass that you can actually plan that out in, in, a, in a way that you're using the information. And then the long term benefits is probably over, over seasons or over years that you build up a picture of how the, the farm, that your farm or the, the type of land you're on performs in the spring, uh, in the summer and in the autumn. So on, in Ballyhays here, it's uh, heavier soils. We tend to have really good grass growth uh, during the summer, rarely suffer from drought, but our tr trouble is usually in the shoulder. So it can be slow in spring and, and autumn and we need to plan for that. You could be farming on a, on a farm that's dry where you suffer from summer droughts and you need to plan for that. So that's, that's the long term and I suppose the other one then, critical one going forward then is you know, planning out the total feed budget for the farm. So if you know what the farm is growing, you can put a pretty good handle then on how many cows you, you should be milking on the platform or on the whole farm or the, the farm as a whole. The benefits we get from measuring grass here in Chagas Grange on, on the dairy beef unit are that it allows us to manage and control the supply and quality of grass. It gives us greater confidence in our management decisions and allows us to plan ahead. By grassland measuring, we identify when a surplus or a deficit in feed supply is likely to occur and to make necessary corrective actions. Also, by looking at our annual tonnage report, we can identify underperforming paddocks and identify them uh, for reseeding. As a result of grazing high quality spring grass with the cattle here behind us, they achieved an average daily gain of 1.3 kilos per day. But we know that mid-season grass quality can decline, but grassland measurement will help us reduce this level of decline and maintain high levels of animal performance. So after completing our farm walk, we firstly look at the demand. We look at the demand and we make sure that this is aligned with the growth rate that we achieved over that given week. We also look at our pre-graze and herbage mass and we try to target a pre-graze and herbage mass in the mid-season of 13 to 1600 and we want this because it promotes the best balance between animal and sward uh, performance. Also a very important figure is the number of days ahead and the number of days ahead gives a very clear picture of how much feed is available for all animals on the farm uh, at that given time. Grassland measurement is time well spent as it will reduce labour and worry. It will also allow you to make the best use of expensive resources such as feed and fertiliser. And by grass measuring we're going to maximise our farm's growth and utilisation levels and this will allow us to uh, optimise our farm's carrying capacity. Welcome to today's Pasture Base Ireland Derogation Training. In today's session, we are going to go through some steps on how to log into Pasture Base Ireland, how to create your farm on the system, how to record a grass cover, how to generate a grass wedge, and also through some of the reports and other information that can be recorded on Pasture Base Ireland. First of all, we need to get into the login screen there are probably two different ways of, of getting to the login screen. First of all, you can type in Pasture Base Ireland into Google, click on search, and it will be the first one here on the list. So that brings us to the login screen. 
Alternatively, we can enter, um, type in here, www.pbi.ie. And it will, it will also bring us to the login screen. Just a few features that we, we'd like to point out. Um, if we scroll down here, and we can see on the left hand side here that we have grass growth rates um, for, for this week. Um, and we can see that they're changing every couple of seconds. So if we click on the dots down the bottom here, we can see it gives the provincial growth rate for the last seven days. Um, and then if we go through the different um, provinces, it gives a breakdown of the, the growth rates for the different counties. The final dot here um, displays the predictive growth rate for the next seven days um, in those particular provinces. In the middle of the screen, then, we have our demonstration and research farms. Um, you can see that there's a drop down list here. So if you wanted to follow or have, keep an eye on any of the demonstration or Tagus research farms, you can simply click on any of them here and you'll get the most up to date information on those on those farms. Then on the right, Pasture Base Ireland is on Twitter. So we post some information on Twitter. Um, we can see that the Grange Open Day is coming up in the 5th of July. There's also um, some grassland tips. So we can see that there's grass dry matter percentages here taken in Moor Park and other grassland tips as well as we scroll down. So keep an eye on, on the right hand side here for any grassland tips or events coming up in your area. Then if we focus on the top of the screen here, uh, we have the grass 10 weekly update. So that's updated every Tuesday. Again, it gives a lot of tips for the coming week. So if you click on that, it'll open it up. Uh, we've also have a dedicated help center, um, which this button here in the middle of the screen um, will bring you to, where there is a range of information, documents, um, videos on how to do different tasks on Pasture Base Ireland. Another feature that I would like to draw your attention to is the forgot password. So if you forget your password anytime, you can come to the login page click on forgot password, enter your email address and enter this security code here, click on submit, and it will send you a new link to create a password to your email address. So simply click on the link provided in the email and you'll be able to create your password again. And just one note on the, on the password, um, it needs to have a capital letter, a small letter, a number or a special character but it needs to be eight characters long. So I'm going to log in here uh, to a demonstration farm. And I have my email put in and I'm going to enter my password. I'm going to click on login. I am logged into a new farm, so there's very little information on this particular profile. So that's why the boxes here on the dashboard are blank. Just to draw your attention to the black left hand menu, this is where it contains all the different options to put in paddocks, to record the cover, to map the farm, to enter graze dates, fertilizer, planners and budgets, etc. The next step is to add paddocks to your profile. So basically creating your farm. So if we click on farm here and click on paddocks, it'll bring us into a new screen. Then on the top right hand corner here, click on add new paddock. And we have some information here to add in for our particular paddocks. So the main thing I suppose in, in relation to paddocks is that I suppose we keep the code is usually a number. If the paddock has a name like the long field or, or the tree corner field, for example, this information can be added here under the name and the area here on hectares needs to be added as well. The other point in is to add uh, paddocks in the sequence that are in the order that you will walk the farm. So it will make it easier when inputting covers. You don't have to be scrolling up and down looking for different paddocks. So in this example, if we just type in number one, so the first paddock, 1.5 hectares, and I don't have any name on this particular paddock. There's other information here as well down the bottom. Uh, that you can fill in, that there's different options, and this is optional. So I suppose just the uh, information with the asterisks beside them, that's where um, the information is mandatory. So for convenience, I'll just click on save and add new. I will proceed 
and keep going, adding the paddocks. I'm just entering the last paddock, paddock 21. So here we can see the list of our paddocks. Total area of the farm is 37.61 hectares. And if we scroll down, we can just see our paddocks are going from paddock one up the top, right down to paddock 21, down the very bottom here. So that's our farm created um, and our paddocks, our paddocks added. The next step then is if, if you'd like to map your farm, so if you click on farm mapping here on the left hand menu, click on build map. You can type in your address, your postal address or your air code. And click on search and it'll bring you to your farm on, on the map. If I just zoom in here, then I can start mapping by clicking here on the pencil. So just a few tips here to just to zoom in as close as you can, so you can easily identify where the paddock starts and ends. And by clicking on the pencil and by clicking on the boundary of the paddocks here, you can start to draw the paddocks. So this is paddock one here, which I'm drawing out around the boundary here and finishing up here. So now the, the shape has gone red. So that means that it's completed. So if I click in on the hand, click on the shape, and then link this shape here to paddock one. So that's paddock one there now. 0 0.42 hectares. Another tip as well is to keep saving the map. So over on the left hand side here, if we click on, on save map after creating every paddock. So then just to move on to paddock two. Again, follow the same format, click on the pencil. Um, then you can stretch out the shape. Click on the hand again and link that to paddock two. You can see the zoom in now buttons are here as well on the top of the screen. Um, so you can zoom in and out. And then I just finally, I'll just show you here how to maybe move the shape around and push it, put by push it into the corners. So if I just draw a shape here, for example, so this is paddock three. So just click on the hand, link it to paddock tree here. Now, if I want to push paddock tree in here to the corner, so I just simply click on the dot and drag it into the corner here. So I can push that paddock there. So I can make it bigger. Push it in around different features that might be in the different paddocks. So I can pull it down here. I'd pull it out into the roadway. here. So you can drag in and out the, the white dots um, and that will change the area then of, of your paddock. So again, to, just to click on save paddocks. So you can keep mapping out the paddocks. So here we can just, there's a wire there and a grove of trees. So we just keep clicking around the, the boundary. Then we come out over here and back where we started. So again, it's gone red, so we can click on the hand. This is paddock 15. Click on save. So after finishing the map, if we just zoom out, we can see that this is the map. This is the map of our farm here. Next, if we just click on view map. So this is what our map looks like in the the view mode. Then just to bring your attention, I suppose, to this button, check areas. So you can see, I suppose, the area that has been added to PBI is the one on the left. 
and the area that is mapped is the one on the right. So you can you you can select here whether you want to use the mapped area or not, and that will override the existing area in which you added into PBI previously. So once you have your paddocks added, the next step in is to add a, a grass cover. So you can see this button, add new grass cover. So you can click on that in the middle of the screen. The measurement date in is, comes in automatically as today. So I suppose it is important that if you are measuring your farm or measuring the grass on your farm, that you, I suppose, record all the measurements on your farm on the one day. So I'll just change this to a couple of days ago, just for convenience, and click on continue. I'm now brought to this screen here where it just gives a list of your paddocks on the left hand side, the area then next to it. And I'm asked in here for a new cover in kilos of dry matter per hectare. So I suppose these are the values down here that we need to fill in for each paddock. So I'll just start putting, filling in the covers. If you're using your computer or your laptop um, to move from one paddock to the next, you can click on the enter button or you can use the up and down arrows on your keyboard. It should make filling in the covers much easier. So I have my last cover entered, 1550 kilos of dry matter per hectare for paddock 21. We have a large range of covers going from 50 kilos of dry matter right up to 1900 kilos of dry matter for paddock 10. So we'll scroll up the top here to the paddock statuses. So all of the paddocks are set here at grass. So that means that they're all available for grazing and they'll all be displayed on the grass wedge. So if we click on the drop down here, there are different options. So being grazed is if you were doing your, your grass cover and there was livestock in a particular paddock, you can set it as being grazed. If it's simply grass, there's just grass in it. Other enterprise, perhaps that there are paddocks maybe around the yard that might be for calves or, or whatever else. You can set that as other enterprise. Reseed, straightforward enough. Any paddocks that were reseeded, you can set it as reseed so that they're currently not available for grazing um, as there, there is no grass in that particular paddock. And then we have two silage status here, long-term silage, which will be silage which is closed up from really more than a week and up to seven or eight weeks. And silage cut now is silage that we're going to cut really within the next couple of days. So for the moment, we'll just leave them all as grass. Daily growth rate. We don't have a daily growth rate here for the moment because this is the first cover that we're entering. So we don't have any other cover to compare it to. So we can calculate um, a daily growth rate for each paddock. As regards the comments, you can click on the little pencil here and you can add in a little comment for, for a paddock if you wish. For example, if there was a wire down in a paddock or a leaky water truck, you can just simply click on the pencil and type in the comment. So once you have your covers entered for each paddock, the next step then is to click on move to wedge. Now we're on the wedge screen. So if we sc scroll down here, we can see the wedge at the top. We can see some of the figures here underneath the wedge. We have the livestock section. If you scroll down to the bottom, then we just get a paddock listing here, going from the highest cover of 1900 right down to the cover of 50 kilos of dry matter in paddock five. So if we scroll up to the top again, so we can see our grass wedge. We have our paddocks with the highest cover on the left, again, right down to our lowest cover. You can also see as well that paddock 20 or the bar for paddock 20 is much thinner than the bar for 21. That just symbolizes that paddock 20 is much smaller in area compared to paddock 21. If you click on the, or if you just hover the mouse on the bar on the wedge, you'll get some information about the paddock, the area, the cover in the paddock, the days it was last grazed, etc. And then if we scroll down further here, just underneath the wedge, you'll see that we have the main figures here, the farm cover, cover per livestock unit, growth rate, demand, and stocking rate. So they're all zero there at the moment because we don't have any livestock on the farm at present. So we just need to add those in now. So 
are rotation linked. So you can see this information button here. So if, again, if you just hover your mouse and, and the information icon, it'll just give you a bit of a guide that between the start of May and the end of July, the rotation link should be between 14 and 28 days. So I'm going to type in there 21 days. You can also see as well, I suppose, the save and update button is gone red. So I'm after entering some uh, small bit of information, the rotation linked. And if I click on that, it's gone green. So it's it's after saving. So to enter some livestock, so we have 100, 120 uh, milking cows, spring milking cows, getting 16 kilos of grass dry matter and two kilos of meal. So their total intake is 18 kilos. Again, if we just keep updating the, the wedge, um, and you can see it's after turning green. So if we scroll up now, we can see that we have a value for the cover per livestock unit. We have a value for days ahead. Our demand is 51 and our stock rate is 3.19 livestock units per hectare. You can also see the, the, the red line here has also come from the bottom. That's our pre-grazing yield line. Now, if we wanted to add in some more stock, perhaps we have we have some calves as well. And you will see with, with the dry stock, um, the dry stock categories, you will have to enter a live weight. So live weight in kilos. And um, you can see there that I have 175 kilos put in for the average weight for a group of 25 calves, average weight per head. So again, I just click here on save and update. So we're allocating 3.5 kilos of grass dry matter per calf. So every 50 kilos of live weight, we're giving them one kilo of grass. So I suppose you can see now our stock line is after jumping up a small bit to 3.26. And that's what our wedge looks like. Again, for dry stock farmers, um, you can add new stock types here, for example. Um, so if we add in suckler cows, Click on save. You'll see that suckler cows have been added in here. So you can put in the number of sucklers, put in the average weight, and the grass intake will automatically be calculated here. If there's meal or silage going in, um, you can enter those in, in these two boxes here. Um, maybe as well, look, there's, there's stock bull maybe might be missing, or if you have sheep, um, lactating yaws, hoggets, whatever whatever type of stock you have, they can be added in as well. So again, we just add in the stock bull um, and he's gone in there as well. So then if we, once we're happy with our stock numbers and our weights and their intakes, um, we can then, I suppose, have a look at our grass wedge. So you can see, I suppose, this red, red button here, this cover per livestock unit is after turning red. So I suppose that's telling us that there's there's something wrong. So if we scroll up to our wedge here, and if we wanted to take over the paddock for silage, for example, paddock 10 here, we can just simply click on the bar. Again, it'll give us some information about the paddock. And you can see the paddock status up here on the top left hand corner. So if we want to change that into silage, long-term silage, silage cut later, and we click on save. So you can see it's gone off the wedge and our figures then have updated. Farm cover has now gone to 750 kilos of dry matter. Again, we'll do the same for paddock 11. For silage cut later, click on save, 750. And that change is then to 717. So I suppose we are, we're making decisions there that we need to remove these paddocks for silage um, in order, I suppose, to keep grass quality good in front of our livestock. Again, we can do the same for, for paddock 20, silage cut later, and click on save. So I suppose we're, we're grazing much better covers now. So we're grazing covers around 1,500 kilos of dry matter. Um, so that, that's what's ideal for, for this time of the year during, during the summertime. Again, we can keep going. We're at, a, we're at 100, 194 kilos of of dry matter per livestock unit, and we have 12 days grass ahead. So maybe if we go another paddock, click on save, and you can keep making decisions, I suppose, until you're happy with, with, with the amount of grass that you have on your farm. 
So we've gone down now to 650. So I think we'll be happy enough with that. We're after taking out a few paddocks and um, stock rate is after increasing and we're, we're grazing much, much better, much better covers here. Then just if we if we went too far, for example, so if we take out paddock seven, just for silage again. And I think I'm I'm gone too low there, so I just need to bring back paddock seven into grass. If we just scroll down here, paddock seven, it's out for silage, click on back to grass. We'll scroll back up. We can see paddock seven is now back on the wedge and we're back around 650 kilos of a farm cover. The wedge as well can be exported to PDF or Excel and can be printed off or can be saved or can be shared with, with other farmers in, in WhatsApp groups um, as well. Projected slash planner is basically um, a projected wedge. So I suppose we can project ahead seven in, in seven days time to see how much grass we will have on our farm and what will our wedge look like in seven days time. So that's the projected slash planner. So in this example, I've taken out paddocks because the, the farm had, had too much grass, but alternatively then, I suppose that if the farm was running out of grass, you can also put in extra meal or extra supplement and reduce the grass intake of the cow accordingly. So I suppose that you stretch out the amount of grass on the farm during periods of reduced growth rate. This is the wedge uh, that we've just put in um, and we can see the details underneath it, the number of stock and I suppose the, the farm cover, etc. underneath it. Now why you want to add a new cover for today. And in this cover then we will be able to enter some graze dates. We'll also be able to see the daily growth rate for each paddock. So if I quickly enter the covers here, Again, using the up and down arrows for ease of entry. We can see that there's values here. Daily growth is being filled in as, as I go down the list. So for paddock one here on the 20th, there was a cover of 200. Then today on the 26th, there's a cover of 600. So it's after growing 400 kilos of dry matter per hectare over six days. And that equates to a growth rate in of 67 kilos of dry matter per day. Then if we keep entering our covers, we come to paddock seven here. Again, on the 20th, there was a cover of 1400 kilos. Today, there's only a cover of 100. So the cover is after dropping. So there's obviously something after happening in the paddock, whether it, the paddock, the grass was removed as silage or whether it was removed by grazing, some event is after happening. So if I click into paddock eight, Number seven here, it goes red. So anything that goes red, it's something missing or data needs to be put in. So we can see here that a date is required. So I suppose during the week, I suppose it's important as, as, as livestock move from one paddock into the next, it's important that you note the graze date. So that's the date that the animals leave the paddock. So the, the, the livestock here, they left the paddock on the 23rd Monday. The pre-grazing yield, that is the yield of grass or the cover of grass on the paddock the day that the livestock enter the paddock. It's not mandatory, um, so you, you can enter that information if you want. I leave it blank in this example. No paddock eight, 450, 1100 for nine. Now we're down to our two paddocks here in yellow. So paddock 10 and paddock 11, um, they were closed for surplus bales and they have been cut since last week. So there was a cover of 1900 kilos and it was in silage. So the silage has been cut. There's a paddock of, a, or there's a cover of 100. Now we need to change the status here from silage cut later to grass. So it's basically, that paddock is now available for grazing. I know there's only a cover of 100 on it, but it's going to appear in our wedge. So has this 
paddock being cut for silage, I can click on yes. And then we have to enter some information here about the event. So this is a silage event. So when did we cut? When was the silage cut? So we just say yesterday. Uh, the yield of silage in kilos of dry matter per hectare can be entered, or the number of bales in the particular paddock can be entered as well. So I'll just type in here 2,000 kilos of dry matter per hectare of a silage yield. Then I can click on save. Paddock 11, similar story, cover of 100, back in grass. Yes, it was cut for silage, um, cut yesterday. And this time I'll put in the number of bales and 200 kilos of dry matter per bale. So we'll just use that value there and save. So as I enter all the rest of the covers down along, I can then save and move to wedge here or move to wedge and I'd be able to see uh, my latest wedge and then being able to make decisions and to make out a plan for grazing for the next couple of days. We are now in the final part of the Pasture Base Ireland training. And I'm going to take you through the application again, and we'll just go through some more tools and we'll be able to discuss some reports on the system as well. So for this particular farm, again, we're on the dashboard. We can see how many, how much land the farmer has, how many paddocks. You can see the spring and autumn rotation planners here on the right. This farm here has the, their milk data coming from their co-op. So the cows are producing over two kilos of milk sellers at the moment. We can see that the farm has, has grown 4,448 kilos of dry matter per hectare so far this year on average across the whole farm. And also we can see here, I suppose, the fertilizer input on the farm, fertilizer and slurry input on the farm so far this year. Then to draw your attention to the black menu here on the left hand side. So again, if we just hover on farm, we can see that you can link to your, a local weather station. We discussed mapping previously, graze, cut silage, so we can record grazed events or silage events as they happen. So if the livestock graze out a paddock this evening, we can come in here and add, add the event. And on Wednesday or Thursday, if they graze out another paddock, we can enter that information on that particular day as well. When you do a cover, that information automatically comes into the, the cover screen. So you won't have to enter that in twice. Milk sales, so for any dairy farms who, who would like to link up to their co-op, they can simply put in their supplier number there and select their, their co-op. And the milk data then will flow across after every collection. Big interest at the moment with more and more farmers recording their, their fertilizer and slurry applications. So you can click on add new here. You can then select a paddock. You can put in the date that it was applied, then select your fertilizer type. Here we're putting it in in units of nitrogen per acre. So we're spreading 20 units per acre at the moment. And then click on save. So you can see our record here up the top. So that's saved there. And if we scroll down, we see inf information for, for other paddocks. Then as time goes on, we can run a report here, paddock summary report. This gives a breakdown of how much NPKNS was applied on the paddock in, in total for the year or up year to date. So we can see that there are totals for each paddock year to date. And then if we scroll down the bottom here, we can get an average here for the farm. So really good information to have at, at your fingertips. Then if we continue down towards this uh, black menu here, so we have our spring and autumn plans. We have a, a budget, so we have a spring budget or an autumn budget for grass. And then we have a fodder budget, which is for your winter requirement or, or your silage requirement. Two really good tools again to have. If you're receding paddocks or over sowing clover, into existing swords, you can record these details here on reseed events. And also if you have site fertility results for your, for your paddocks, that information as well can be recorded under the soil test re results. Then to move on, I suppose, to the reports. Very popular report will be your annual tonnage report. This displays the amount of grass grown on each paddock. 
year to date again. And we also have an average over here on the right hand side of the graph. Underneath it then we can see that there's a lot of information about the paddock, what for grass varieties in the paddock, when it was reseeded, how many grazings, how many silage cuts, and the dry matter then uh, accordingly. You can also run these reports for different times of the year or for different years by changing the dates and, and applying the filter. Another good report will be the soil test report. This displays the soil fertility on the paddock, how much fertilizer and slurry was applied, and how much fertilizer then was grown as a result. So it ties in the tree well there. Again, you can change the, the year on the right hand side. Now, if I go back to the dashboard, you can also link up with other farmers in your locality or in your discussion group or even advisors which are helping you along your journey. So you can click on this share, share data with, and you can send a request to another farmer, another advisor, so you, you can share results bet between each other. I would also encourage all farmers to download the PBI Grass app, which is available in the App Store and the Google Play Store also. It's really handy when entering covers and graze dates, fertilizer records, etc. Now we have come to the end of the training session. Hopefully you've got a better understanding on how to use Pasture Base Ireland. Bye for now and the very best in your grass measuring and budgeting journey. This is Joseph Dunphy here from the Chagas Grass 10 team. The Grass 10 team, along with our colleagues in advisory, run grass discussion groups throughout the country. These grass discussion groups meet roughly eight times per year and stay with the same host farmer for these eight meetings. When we go out on farm, we discuss where the animals were last, we look at where they were currently grazing and where they're going to next to build up a picture for the grazing situation on that farm. We will then look at some of the pasture base data and have a look at average farm cover, growth versus demand, and give advice to all farmers based off that. We tend to stay with the same farmer for the year so that both the advisors and the farmers can see the progress and the results from the previous group meeting in the following group meeting. The changes at farm level are simply that farmers know the correct grass for their cows to be eating throughout the summer. And we know that if our cows are grazing the correct grass of 1400, we know they're going to have more milk, more milk solids from the same or less meat. If we inc increased grass digestibility by 4%, we're going to increase our milk solids by 5%. And for a standard 100 cow herd, we know that this is going to deliver over 400 euro per week in extra milk receipts. So it's a great financial decision to get involved in, in a grass group. Other changes at farm level include helping farmers to improve their grazing infrastructure, such as having the correct paddock size for their animals and the correct water infrastructure for their animals. You do not need to be an expert to join in. A grass group is put together with people at similar stages of their grassland management journey. To get more information on a grass group in your local area, contact your local Chagas advisor or get in contact with the, one of the Grass 10 team directly. Keep an eye out for us at Chagas Grass 10 on social media and subscribe to our weekly newsletter which has all the management tips and farmer profiles you need to help you on your grassland management journey.